Welcome back to our 10th video in the series exploring the timeless wisdom of how to win friends and influence people. Today we dive into part 4 of the book, focusing on chapters 7, 8, and 9. We'll be unveiling the secrets of leadership and change, seasoned with a dash of humor. Ever heard of the leader who couldn't lead a pack of chewing gum? Well, he's not the focus today. So buckle up as we navigate the intricacies of leadership and remember, even the greatest leaders started somewhere. Chapter 7 is all about getting cooperation. Now, we've all been there, trying to get everyone on board with our ideas. It's like herding cats, isn't it? But what if I told you there's a better way? Imagine being able to rally your team around your vision, not by coercion or manipulation, but by creating an eager desire within them to cooperate. Sound impossible? It's not. In fact, it's the key principle of this chapter, making the other person eager to accomplish what you suggest. How do we do this, you ask? Well, it starts with understanding. Understanding others' viewpoints, their needs, their desires. When we take the time to truly comprehend where someone else is coming from, we open the door to mutual respect and collaboration. But don't just stop at understanding. Show empathy, validate their feelings and opinions. This doesn't mean you have to agree with everything they say, but by acknowledging their perspective, you're showing them that you value their input. This builds trust and paves the way for cooperation. Next, appeal to nobler motives. Everyone wants to feel important and valued. So instead of dictating what needs to be done, try painting a picture of how their cooperation will lead to a greater good. This could be anything from achieving team goals to contributing to a bigger cause. The trick is to make them feel they're part of something bigger than themselves. Lastly, make your suggestions sound appealing. This doesn't mean sugarcoating the truth or making false promises. Instead, highlight the benefits they'll gain from cooperating, the skills they'll learn, the recognition they'll receive. Make it about them, not about you. Remember, the key takeaway here is making the other person eager to do what you suggest. It's not about strong-arming them into submission, but about fostering genuine enthusiasm. It's about turning the impossible task of herding cats into a harmonious symphony of cooperation. Now, isn't that a tune we'd all like to dance to? Moving on to Chapter 8, we find a formula that promises to work wonders. Sounds like magic, doesn't it? Well, let's see. As we delve into the depths of Chapter 8, we uncover a formula that may seem deceptively simple, yet it holds the power to transform relationships and interactions. Now you might be thinking, a formula? Really? Yes, really. But don't worry, it's not a mathematical equation, it's an approach, a mindset, a way of relating to people that can truly work wonders. This chapter reveals the secret ingredient to effective leadership, the ability to make others happy to do what you suggest. Now this doesn't mean manipulating people or twisting their arms. No, it's about inspiring, motivating, and engaging them. It's about showing respect for their ideas and feelings, acknowledging their needs and desires, and finding a common ground. The beauty of this formula lies in its practicality. It's not some abstract theory that sounds good on paper but falls flat in the real world. No, it's a practical, actionable tactic that can be applied in every aspect of your life from your personal relationships to your professional interactions. The effectiveness of this formula is grounded in the simple yet profound principle of empathy. It's about understanding the perspective of the other person, stepping into their shoes, and seeing the world through their eyes. When you can do that, you can tailor your suggestions in a way that resonates with them, that makes sense to them, that makes them happy to follow your lead. This is not about winning an argument or proving a point. It's about creating a win-win situation where both parties benefit. It's about fostering collaboration instead of competition, cooperation instead of conflict. And the best part? This formula doesn't require any special skills or talents. It simply requires a willingness to listen, to understand, and to respect the other person's viewpoint. It's about being a leader, not a boss. So what's the magic formula? Make the other person happy about doing what you suggest. It's not rocket science, but it's definitely a game changer. Chapter 9 talks about something everyone wants. Curious? Let's find out. We're diving deep into the human psyche in this chapter, exploring a universal craving that binds us all the desire for importance. Now, before you start conjuring up images of grandeur or fame, let's clarify, 
This isn't about wanting to be the next big Hollywood star or the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, though that would be nice, wouldn't it? No, what we're talking about here is a fundamental human need to be valued, to feel significant in some way. It's about knowing that you matter, that you're appreciated for who you are and what you do. It's about that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when someone acknowledges your hard work or when you're recognized for your unique skills or talents. So how does this tie into leadership and influencing people? Well, the secret is simple yet profound. As leaders, when we give people honest and sincere appreciation, we're satisfying this deep-seated desire for importance. We're showing them that they matter, that their contributions are valued. And in doing so, we're not just boosting their morale or winning their loyalty. We're also empowering them to reach their full potential to give their best to whatever they do. But remember, it has to be honest and sincere. People can easily spot fake compliments or insincere praise. So when you appreciate someone, make sure it comes from the heart. Let it be genuine and specific. Instead of a generic good job, tell them exactly what you appreciated about their work and why. The principle at the heart of this chapter is giving honest and sincere appreciation. It's about recognizing and acknowledging the worth in others. When we do this, we're not just fostering stronger relationships, we're also cultivating a culture of respect and mutual appreciation. So what's the one thing everyone wants? Honest and sincere appreciation. And when we give it, we're not just being nice, we're being leaders. All right, folks, let's do a quick recap of what we've learned today. We kick things off with Chapter 7, How to Get Cooperation. We learned that to get the cooperation of others, it's not about cracking the whip or shouting orders. It's about making people feel valued, understood, and part of a common goal. It's about leading with empathy, not authority. Then we dove into Chapter 8, a formula that will work wonders for you. Here we discovered that criticism, while sometimes necessary, needs to be delivered with tact and respect. It's about offering feedback in a way that encourages improvement, not resentment. So remember folks, nobody likes a sour grape, so always aim to be a sweet peach. Finishing up with chapter nine, what everybody wants. This chapter reminded us that at our core, we all wanna feel important and appreciated. As leaders, it's our job to make sure those we lead feel that way, because a happy team is a productive team and nobody wants to be part of a grumpy gang. And there you have it. Three chapters, three principles, and a whole lot of wisdom. Like this video, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for the next video in our series and remember, leadership is a journey, not a destination.